So, good morning, everybody. I'm Rob Collins, and I'm Executive Director of Finance here at the Trust. Um, and what I intend to do is just take 10 minutes of your time to talk through the key headlines within the accounts for 2021 22. But maybe before we get into some of the key numbers, maybe talk about the journey that gets us to this point. So, recognising the accounts run from April 2021 through to March 2022, there's a five month period that's passed obviously since that period closed. <laughs> So what the finance team will do on the 31st of March is they'll pick up the financial position and do a lot of validation. And they'll pull together a number of working papers that ultimately then become a consolidated set of accounts. Once we're in a position where we're satisfied and we're comfortable with that, we then submit that to our external auditors. So our external auditors being Grand Thornton, and they provide that independent assurance that what we're describing in the accounts is seen as a true fair view. Once they've done their testing and they've tested our assumptions and our judgments, that then gets submitted with our accounts as a final set to all the committee board, seeking board's approval before we then wait before Parliament. So it takes a fair amount of time for that process to conclude before we arrive at an AGM and we're able to present the numbers to yourselves. So I always think it's a bit of a dark art, dark art of finance. I think it's important just to feel that process we have to go through before we're able to present the position to the public piece today. So we'll only go through this for 10 minutes and I'm definitely not going to go through the accounts in detail. I think this might be just a positive reflection of the session. I think more than 10 minutes will see people walking out towards the edge of the door. So we will keep it to the headlines. Okay, so starting at the top, I guess, with the income flows the organisation received in 2021-22. We received a £640 million income flow. Okay, so a big number and bigger than we've seen previously in an AGM for the Trust. The majority, around two thirds of that income, comes from our local clinical commissioning groups. Okay, so back to the places that Joe described before. And in addition to that, around 25% of our income comes from NHS England. And that's predominantly from specialised commissioners to support our low, medium, and high secure services. To put it into context, that £640 million is part of what is around £150 billion nationally for the health service. So to put it into context. And as importantly, is to recognise it's a significant increase on the previous year's set of uh, income numbers. Because it's increased by £119 million pounds compared to the previous year. And the two big drivers of that, to talk back to some of the highlights that Joe referred to, particularly the North West Borders acquisition from the 1st of June last year, but also our role that we took on the lead provided collaborative from November last year as well, both had a significant impact on our income flows. As an organisation, we then utilise that £640 million and we spent it in full. Okay, so we consumed the full £640 million and that allowed us to get to a break-even position. So break-even is, is just saying the income that we received, we spent in full. So we didn't deliver a surplus, but we certainly didn't deliver a deficit. So a really positive outcome for the year, particularly recognising the complexity of some of the things we were, we were dealing with across our services. When you look at that expenditure, the majority of it, around three quarters of it, is as you would expect on our staffing group. So whether that's our medics, our nurses, our AHPs, our admin staff, our corporate staff, all our staff groups, the majority of our income is consumed by supporting our wage bill. The remaining 25% for the non-staff elements, around half of it, is around servicing our buildings, and it's also around making sure that we've got the right clinical services and suppliers available to our frontline clinical staff to make sure that there's nothing in terms of restriction that stops them performing the high level of clinical duties that we have to carry out. We've done all that during the financial year and we've concluded with a really positive cash balance of 84.2 million pounds. And why that's important, I've come back to in a while, because it leads back around to some sort of the points Joe made before around how a sustainable organisation maintains a balance between quality and finance. But one of the key elements of that cash balance is it allows us to invest in our capital programme. And last financial year, we invested £39.1 million. And that was in new bricks and mortar, so it was some of our new building initiatives, but it was also on the maintenance of existing buildings as well. So it showed the environment for our service user patients' experience, but also the safety of our staff is not compromised. To make sure that, that environment is operated at a high level, we stay on top of that maintenance programme. During the period, as you'd expect, COVID costs all trusts more money than it's consumed previously. And for our trust, we invested just under £17 million, pounds, so £16.8 million in our response to COVID. And when you look at the drivers behind that, why did we have to invest that amount of money? It was predominantly around lost capacity with our staff and work group. 
So where our staff may have um, had COVID or were isolated because of COVID, it had a significant impact on our ability to make sure our capacity was to keep COVID levels. So in order to maintain safety staffing levels, there's a requirement to invest in those additional temporary measures to bring additional staff in. The final point, but probably a really significant point, loops back around to the first point when it's up the turnover increase. During this financial year, we've seen a consolidation of a set of finances from the previous North West Forest organisation into a single set of emerging care numbers. So a really positive set of headline numbers to come out of the accounts for 2001. So 2021-22. So stopping to think around some of the achievements within that period as well. So we've already talked about the statutory duty, so we've already talked about delivery of the key numbers around break-even and positive cash balances. In addition to that, that process I talked about before from Grant Thornton is they went through that audit process as an independent process and concluded they had an unqualified opinion on our accounts, which is positive and reflects their in agreement to reflect a true and fair view. From an internal audit point of view, through the internal audit process, they went through the normal checks and balances on our internal controls. So a really, really important part of the jigsaw because that allows us to have the confidence that the right controls in place to safeguard our financial assets if that's a trust. It's a really important piece of the jigsaw. And what it concluded was the high and substantial assurance across the board. So describing the highest two levels of assurance of how we operate as a team and how we operate as an organisation financially. From a better payments practice code, so BPPC, again a really important one from a social commitment point of view, that was seen to be processed and paying our invoices on time. The national target is that you deliver on 95% of your invoice payments within 30 days. Last financial year we had a significant challenge around the volumes of invoices, particularly around the temporary staffing piece I talked about in our response to COVID. So that COVID response meant that we were engaging in more of those temporary staffing resources, so our invoice numbers went up. And that had an impact on our ability to live at 95%. The positive of this is during the last part of the year through improvement actions, we're now back up above 95%. So we've gone through that challenging period presented by COVID and we're back in a place that wants to be that we're in pre-COVID at plus 95%. And then the final achievement for me on this, on this particular slide is one I'm hugely proud of and one we should all be hugely proud of across the trust. Because this is recognition that we carry level three accreditation within the Towards Excellence programme. So this is a nationally recognised level of accreditation that's performed externally, but describes where the organisation functions with the financials. So how it balances finance with quality, how it looks and it appraises new investment opportunities, or how it sets a culture, both internally within the finance team and right across the organisation, to make sure that all the clinical leads or the operational leads across the organisation carry financial responsibility are working as a recognised high standard and it's something I'm hugely proud of and hugely committed to making sure that we maintain. So early on, I think particularly linked back around to Joe's points around some of the, the journey that we've been on that roadmap for the trust. When you look at our major capital investment, and if you link back to my earlier slide when we talked about the importance of having £84 million pounds cash in the bank, if you don't have that cash, it restricts your ability to do some of these capital investments. And this is a hugely powerful slide because if you look over the last 10 years, it tracks the level of capital investment that we've had. And when you look at the narrative within the slide, you can see that the investment's been around a quarter of a billion pounds, so £252 million for the last 10 years. And what we've got this year is a forecast to continue that trend to increase it beyond £300 million by the end of the financial year. And then again, directly linked to Joe's update, you can see the examples of some of the key investments that contributed towards that investment piece. So it's working uh, clockwise through the chronology, starting at the top of the clock view, right through Hartley Hospital, Road and View, current bill for the LSU and the Ashworth site, and then the Mosley Hill development as well, that's just getting off the market now, which will be open works. You can see our commitment to maintain existing estate. So you can see the Ward Refair program and some of the infrastructure program for High Secure. But the biggest value on there, you can see £79 million pounds during that period of what we call operational capex. So as well as pursuing the new and exciting new buildings and the new important buildings to change for the facilities to work out on, it also recognises we've got an existing state that we want to get to the highest standards, making sure we comply with the health and safety, but also making sure that the environment is fit for purpose for service users, patients and our staff as well. And also we can back to G, uh, GBE and our digital infrastructure investments of £10.5 million during that period. 
So that probably takes us to the end of the 2001, the 2021, 22 accounts. Maybe spending a little bit of time, a minute or so, just looking forward. So as you'd expect, where we stand at the moment, coming out of that COVID period, coming out of the national COVID financial framework that was set nationally for the last two and a bit years, we're in that place of sort of understanding what it looks like going forward. Whilst we continue to live with COVID, but while we're hopefully managing it in a more effective way than we had previously through the vaccination programme and the rest. So looking forward, we're in a phase at the moment where we're working through a refresh of our finance investment framework. So this ultimately articulates how we align our financials, how we align our resources most effectively to our strategic ambition and our strategic will. To make sure we can enable it where we can and make sure that the two things stay absolutely intrinsically linked through the process. A couple of numbers on there in terms of our 22-23 plan. We're probably coming across the left hand side, the top left. Some of the changing dynamic that financially we're going to be working through as part of that investment framework is how we move to that system first methodology of thinking as we move to the integrated care system, which we're expected to work with. How we interact with our system partners with Cheshire and Merseyside, how we work together on common issues to achieve a common goal. And ultimately make sure financial resources are most effectively aligned to our population health needs. So the final bit for me, I guess, is this opportunity for a quick thank you. So I go from this as Neil Smith, predecessor, has also fronted it in previous years. I'll from this with a thank you, and I'll front in terms of presenting the position. But ultimately, this is a consequence of all staff and all staff's involvement, and staff taking the right responsibility to maintain that balance to safeguard our resources at the best time for the public when we're making decisions right across our services. So that thank you goes to operational clinical leads, but it also goes to the finance team as well. Because it's no small task to work through this process and get to the position where I spent 10 minutes presenting the numbers. So a big thank you to all involved.